So let's do one more. Um, this time I changed the cash flow to 30 and I put a, a growth rate. I also uh, made it so we can put in a level payment or a um, so if we press level payment remember we got this from uh, this page or retrieved it from this page a better way to say it All right. so our debt schedule this time we have debt service moving around a little bit okay and to get the uh, cash flow working let's put the growth rate here now this is a monthly model what you do is you just take one plus the uh, growth rate you raise this to the 1 to 12 power subtract 1 that's our monthly growth rate and then we'll just multiply this by 1 plus the okay so there we have it and our cash flow is slowly going up um, each period. Now, in this case, I think what we should put is less debt service requirement. Okay, now, that last time we did a minimum, but I think it would have been a lot better to do a debt service requirement here. And then we put the withdrawal, and this is the minimum of either this or the uh, amount in the opening balance of the debt service. Okay, so that's how much we withdraw, but now our remaining cash flow, and we can just call it remaining cash flow, is negative. Now, for years and years and years I've been doing this. I probably don't have many videos on it, but I think in a model you should allow for negative cash flow. You don't say that that can never happen. Of course it can happen. But more importantly, make your model see how low it can go before the default occurs. Don't allow your model to kind of blow up so you can't see what's happening. So then we can put default. Now if we have a default, we just put the... Uh, and unfortunately, well, I guess the, the uh, 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 you can't really default by more than the cash flow if it's, if it's negative. But for now, let's just put minimum again. It's always minimum. And you take this number, but you just, we only have a default when uh, max of the of minus this one or zero okay and uh, okay and we're not gonna put any limits so I said minimum and I meant maximum okay now what happened here we we uh, didn't have a default but um, we better uh, as soon as we uh, um, have a default, we better um, we we better do two things. Now, the first thing we can do is underneath the debt schedule, it works so much better to keep it a separate. So put defaulted debt, and we put an opening balance add the defaults and put less repayments of defaults okay and let's and now there could be a default interest of course that's different than the uh, actual interest rate but and then let's put interest okay so the, this, the rule is almost exactly the same now. The rule is that you make the opening balance equals the closing balance. Well, that's kind of silly. But then you take the defaults from the cash flow statement, not the other way around, okay? Just like we would in any way. We haven't put the repayments of the default 
there. So this is, we add how much the false we have, and we p put less how much we repay, and then multiply this by the opening balance. Okay. Shift Control R. Okay. So we have all of all of this now in the debt service account we can put required debt service and I think we better add any defaulted debt because we better stick that in in the uh, so we can put the opening balance of this in okay so and then we'll this this will uh, I guess we'll add it later I mean I'm sure that's a rule against that okay so this time when we added the uh, default here then we uh, then we continue to uh, have a positive requirement all the time we don't have this funny thing where we thought we could uh, repay it okay now um, we let's if let's go through this now so we had another default we have to put this in and then we have enough cash flow over here we uh, just let's see what happens why don't we uh, make a freeze paying okay so this time we have a uh, we put it into our balance excuse me we're looking at the cash flow waterfall so this time uh, we have some positive cash flow left over let's understand why okay so we uh, needed that much we needed 129 we add this we take away uh, this amount but you know what we should first take away is we also should we also should take away any amounts uh, in our defaulted debt balance okay so we can put and essentially what, what we do is we put add default now just this is this is in general what you do and then you put less repayment of default okay and we this time we do the same thing we look at the cash flow but this time we put maximum of this cash flow or zero so we only do it if it's positive and that's our repayment so uh, here why why just a minute we had some uh, positive amounts here okay are we okay so far and we the amount we pay is the minimum of this or the opening balance of the default I hope this is all start starting to look a, a little familiar okay um, whoops did I press shift control R okay and uh, this it looks like we're always paying the default back okay and now we'll uh, um, now we'll take this uh, where's our is, where's our defaulted debt balance here okay now just a minute what we're gonna have to do is adjust the debt service uh, reserve account and since I'm making a video and I've really never done this before um, I want to uh, notice that we kind of have a funny negative balance here. We've got to fix this for the defaulted debt. Okay, to make this work, here's what I did. I um, uh, let's go in here. Okay. 
Okay, the first thing I did was I put the accrued interest into the defaulted debt. We're going to pay interest. If we're going to have the interest, we're not going to actually pay it. If we're in the middle of default, okay? And then in our debt service re reserve account, I think we had this before, we just add in all the debt, uh, 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 defaulted debt, okay? Let's delete some of this here. And then the repayment of the defaulted debt, well, if we actually pay that defaulted debt, if we added that to our required balance, when we actually pay it, we take it out of the, we use the debt, the amount we've, we're accumulating for the debt service reserve to pay it. So we've got a remaining cash flow, you know, we should put a nice little, uh, uh, border on this and then we have this and then finally we could put cash flow after default which is now essentially going to be our dividend so we take this cash flow we add the default back to it subtract out the repayment for the default so we go here and we've got no cash flow no cash flow no cash flow and then we can finally, after we've paid off all of the uh, defaulted debt and the interest on the defaulted debt that we accrued, we paid this off. And, oh, I had to put the interest on a monthly basis because we'll just accrue it uh, uh, month by month. And so that's how we can start to incorporate a uh, debt default into a cash flow waterfall. Now, I think we should keep going because what happens if we have a debt service reserve account? We can start modeling that in a in a similar kind of way. And what happens if we have a, a cash sweep account? So what we'll do for the cash sweep account is assume I have to get rid of my uh, things here. Let's assume we have sixty of cash flow or something. Okay, and you know, maybe the cash flow swings up and down. If you want to get fancy with Monte Carlo simulation, you could even do something like that, but that might be a little bit of a waste of time. Okay, this time we're instead of gonna allowing this just to be paid with dividends, we trap some of this cash flow. One way or another, we trap this cash flow, and then we one way or another eventually release the trap if there's if there's uh, if there's a high enough cash flow so why don't we then for the next uh, exercise let's just incorporate a, a debt service reserve account and this is painful this month this is painful to do it must be painful to watch maybe you opened it if you got to the end you deserve a big uh, bonus, okay?